Britain's Information Commissioner, Elizabeth Denham, has had a busy year, with her office conducting an inquiry into data sharing during the campaign on Brexit. As well, it started criminal proceedings against Cambridge Analytica. Ms Denham is in Wellington for an international privacy forum and joins me now. Is there actually such a thing as privacy anymore? There absolutely is. And in fact, I think 2018, when we look back on 2018, we'll say this was a pivotal year for data protection and, and privacy globally. Did we realise, I guess, five years ago that we wouldn't have this much privacy left? I, the, the concern is really with new internet technologies that are moving so quickly. But I think citizens and consumers are increasingly concerned about the kind of profiles that they leave behind, their digital footprints that they leave behind. So these laws, privacy laws and privacy commissioners are more critically important than ever before. Is it also a case that the young don't care, they don't think about the future, and they're the ones that probably need protecting more than ever because they go on there, they just social media away and it's there? I would challenge that. I think young people, especially when they get to their 20s and they're thinking about their first job or getting into an education program, that they are concerned about their profile online. I just, I think they can be as tech savvy as older people. They may not think about privacy in the same way, but they're pretty good at keeping their parents away from their profile online. Yes, that's very true, he said, thinking about his own son. All right. Can you update me with the Brexit inquiry and what's happening with Cambridge Analytica? Cambridge Analytica um, has gone into administration, but we are pursuing um, criminal uh, proceedings against Cambridge Analytica because they failed to comply with our enforcement notice. So we're in court with um, the directors of Cambridge Analytica in January of this year. So we are proceeding with, we're also proceeding with examining forensically a lot of data that my office has seized from Cambridge Analytica because it touches on citizens, including New Zealanders, from around the world. What did they do wrong? Cambridge Analytica acquired um, Facebook profiles and other data illegally under the UK law. So Cambridge Analytica is a British company with obviously a parent company elsewhere, but they acquired data in contravention without proper notice and consent from app developers. So we are, we are proceeding to pursue um, allegations and um, our investigation. Has this made other big data companies sit back and think and look at where they're at and what information they're getting? It has, and I think our investigation has sent a strong message that data protection laws have to be complied with, and people will care. The regulator has the tools and the ability to enforce the law, and that's what we're doing here, especially important in the context of political campaigning. Where is the line? Where is the line? How much data? Yeah, I mean, for political parties, I mean, they collect data on voters to determine who their voters are, who they're not. How careful do political parties need to be? Political parties are subject to the data protection law like any other corporate entity in, in the UK. Political parties have, I think, a special place in our democracy. We do want political parties to be able to engage with voters. And so, yes, they do have to have some data. But the data that they collect has to be legally acquired, and people have to have transparency and knowledge about how much data is out there, who has it. And in big data politics, our investigation found a whole data ecosystem that involve data brokers, political parties, data analytics companies like Cambridge, and we really needed to pull back the curtain so that voters could understand how their data is being collected, and then we took steps to enforce the law. So the law is the law as it is today. Do you see that line changing as people find out how, just how much information there is about themselves and start getting that loud voice and saying, no, I, I didn't approve of this? Will that law get stronger, do you think? The law has been enhanced and reformed in the European Union. So there are stronger rights now in EU law. 
I think, to match the internet technology. So people have the ability, stronger rights to find out how their data is being used, rights of deletion or erasure, stronger rights than they had before, and also the regulator, the ICO in this case, the Information Commissioner's Office, has um, stronger sanctions, higher fines to take action against companies when they, when they get it wrong. So these are all, I think the law has changed. New Zealand law, it, they're looking at reform here in this country to give the commissioner stronger powers to pr protect citizens and voters. These, these, this kind of law reform is happening around the world and it, it is important that we stand up for the rights of, of citizens and consumers. Because in order for the citizens to remove the permission for something to, or someone to have that information, they have to know they've got it in the first place. And so there's that line of how do they know? Because you just don't think about it, do you? That's exactly the point of our investigation. There's so much invisible, opaque processing of our personal data. And in order for us to exercise our rights of erasure, of correction, to, to access information that an agency has about us, we have to be able to know what's happening in the first place. But it would also be a case that there's so much information out there, I'd spend all day giving someone permission or withdrawing permission, wouldn't I? You should have the right to find out what information agencies and bodies and companies have about you. And if you choose to exercise those rights, there should be somebody who has your back, who can enforce them. In an interview earlier this year, you talked about data surveillance, deep surveillance, and invisible processing. And you said democracy and the integrity of our elections are at risk. What do you mean by that? We talked about invisible profiling. We talked about political parties that may be purchasing large data sets that are not properly consented to through data brokers. So our investigation that I spoke to you about was looking at all of those different agencies in the ecosystem. What are political parties doing? How do social media companies target potential voters and per perhaps nudge them in a certain direction? So data brokers, social media companies, political parties, data analytics companies, all of these actors and players in the ecosystem were the subject of our investigation. So you mentioned social media. Look, Facebook, one of those organizations, has attracted much criticism, still does. Um, does it need to lift its game? And at the end of the day, do we even know if they would? Do you know what I mean by that? They might say, or Zuckerberg might say, yes, we don't do this, we don't do this, we don't do this, prove that we are, and you've got to somehow do that. We've, um, we've fined Facebook the maximum amount available to us under our previous regime. Um, and Facebook is, is appealing that, that fine at the moment. They have the right to do that but we stand by our findings and, and we will continue to pursue Facebook's activities when they cross the line. The is law. any fine big enough to make them change behavior? Because they've got so much money behind them. It's like, as an ordinary citizen, I might sit there and go, why would they even care? I see that Facebook has started to implement some new transparency measures, especially around political advertising. I think that's important. But in the European Union, we now, data protection authorities now have fines up to 4% of global turnover. But at the end of the day, I think what matters to companies like Facebook is their users and whether users have, have trust in how their, their data is, is used and shared. And people will eventually vote with their feet if there are alternative services available. So I think Facebook does care about user trust I think Facebook does care about large sanctions and, and fines. Do you also go as far as looking at media? We do oversee media in, in the UK. So we, we do have um, the law extends to, to media. And in fact, the ICO is working on a, a data protection code for media this year. In terms, do, does it cover fake news? Does that fall into this realm? Or is it only the privacy? Because <laughs> Do you, do you understand where they intertwine? You probably more so. But. I, think, I think that is a live conversation um, among uh, policymakers, parliamentarians, and fake news is not an entirely new phenomena. 
but misinformation and disinformation and the way that it can be spread and promulgated so widely through social media is a deep policy concern. It doesn't fit neatly into any, regula any regulatory remit at present. But it might. It might. And uh, there was a committee, a grand committee of parliamentarians from nine different parliaments that met in Westminster last week to talk about misinformation and disinformation and are there, is there a way forward to regulate in this space? An irony in the fact that Facebook's sponsoring cocktail drinks at the end of the privacy forum, do you think? Are they sponsoring drinks? Is That's up to the organizers of, of this meeting, but at this meeting that, that we're attending is um, is organized by the Asia Pacific Privacy Authorities and John Edwards Office, who's the Privacy Commissioner of New Zealand. Should New Zealand businesses be worried by the general data protection rules in Europe? New Zealand businesses are subject to the general data protection regulation if they are directing services to European residents. So they are caught by the law. I think New Zealand businesses that are complying with uh, the the law in New Zealand and doing their very best to protect data shouldn't be worried. But I am going to be talking to businesses um, tomorrow afternoon about the the extent of the law and, and, and the view from Europe. Does it impose unnecessary red tape? I don't see the GDPR as unnecessary red tape. The intent of the law is to protect European residents no matter where they are. But there, I mean, there's technicalities that businesses need to be aware of, and I'm happy to be here to help educate New Zealand businesses and their advisors about that. Are we generally, if we knew how much information was being taken from us, would we be aghast, shocked? I think my team, my office, were surprised about the extent of information that uh, social media companies, data brokers, political parties had about voters and prospective voters, which is why we carried out our investigation. I think transparency and knowledge of, of citizens is, is step one. I also think we need to be smarter about our own digital profiles, and I think we need to do a better job of questioning what we read online, getting back to your point about fake news. Is Big Brother here? I think the I would look at Big Brother. You're talking about the government surveillance, or are you talking about commercial surveillance? Well, both, I suppose, wouldn't it? There is a lot of surveillance through the data trails that we leave behind, and that's why we need strong laws, that's why we need transparency, and that's why we need strong regulators to, to protect us. Is your job only going to get harder with technology? Our job is getting harder every year. The, we're fortunate in that the parliament in the UK has given us um, a new fee regime and more resources. But even in the past two years, we've doubled the staff that we have at the ICO, and we also have upped our technology game with more technologists that have joined us, more partnerships with universities and, uh, and other firms to do the job we need to do. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.